Hey guys, so very different location today. It's not the coach, it's not a gym. We are at the supermarket. So we're gonna go around and show you my food shop, my bulking food shop, because we did a video like this a long time ago where it was a full day of eating and then we went to a supermarket and we did like a walk around the shop. It got cut short because we got caught filming. We've learned from that. I'm hoping we won't get caught today. Uh, because I don't, it's not legal, but they just, I don't think they like people filming in, in the supermarket, but we're not gonna film other people. We'll make sure to be respectful, but I think it's a good opportunity to, for me to go around and explain why I get you know, this food source, this food source, what carbohydrates I have, what protein I have at peak off season, which is a time when you need to get smart with foods. There's more to think about it. There's more options. It's more exciting. So um, yeah, this will probably be a better video than the last. And yeah, we'll go around, answer a couple of questions that I've had on my Instagram as well about nutrition and yeah we'll get into it but let's just hope we don't get caught because that will ruin the whole video well it might make it interesting but <laughs> let's go first thing raspberries so i love berries because they're very high in antioxidants so really good for health they fight oxidative stress so i keep some of that in even in the off season even though the volume is quite high I would recommend keeping it in all the time. The only issue is it's so expensive like this, so getting frozen berries is a lot cheaper. So yeah, that's just one tip. I would recommend frozen berries because you can buy a lot more for a lot less. It's so difficult getting the right, right, what, what's the word? Right amount of ripe. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Bananas, because if you get these, then two days later, they're going to be pointless. But also I have them like every day. I guess I'm just gonna go with these. I, I, I recognize the sweet spot. Yeah. <laughs> so, right now, all my veg is salad. So that's not really the best advice. But when you're me with a very low appetite, it's all I can really get in at this point. So if you are struggling, salad is a really good way of just getting some sort of veg in and also, it means the fiber isn't super high if you're doing like loads of broccoli and stuff like that, and then you're having loads of carbs that can bump your fiber up significantly. So, this is probably the most unsurprising thing I'm getting, which is chicken breast. A load of chicken. I honestly think if, I, if someone pulled out a statistic on how many chickens I've killed through eating them, it would probably haunt me. <laughs> but I have a lot of chicken. Obviously, it's a really good protein source. It's very easy to cook, easy to cook in an air fryer, which I use. And yeah, it's always my favorite protein source. It's, I eat it twice a day, chicken and rice. You can't complain about that. Classic bodybuilder meal. And yeah, that is my main protein source, I would say. Definitely will not be getting any of this. I do understand if someone's a vegan for like, environmental reasons, but if you're doing it for health, it's not healthy and if you're doing it for performance it's a stupid idea because the amino acid profiles of those meals are far less even in highly bioavailable vegan sources it's not the same as chicken greek yogurt and so on and with that mentioning yogurt that's what we're going to get so my favorite greek yogurt is always this phase it's just the lowest carb highest protein literally 100 grams is 10 grams of protein so this is really, really high in protein. And yeah, it's nice to switch it up, obviously, if you're having like a lot of whey, you don't want to have too much whey, in my opinion, it can ruin your digestion. Having some of this like, last meal of the day is really good. And yeah, you could add like granola, have berries with it. And it's, yeah, it's very high in protein. Definitely would recommend it if you like yogurt and you can tolerate some lactose. Um, and even to be honest, if you aren't that good at tolerating lactose, Greek yogurt isn't actually as bad as people think. So 0% or you can get the 5%. So I will get the 5% actually because this is a very easy way of getting some fats in. So 100 grams is five grams of fat. So it's literally like the same volume, but it's added some extra calories there. And it's, you know, it's a healthy fat source. So yeah, definitely get this, I would recommend. So someone asked a question, because we're looking at protein, when to increase protein sources from like whole protein sources. So in my opinion, when you're bulking, you don't really need to increase your protein once you set it up at the level you need it, like at that certain level. In my opinion, 
like a gram per pound to 1.5 grams per pound is adequate. You could do a gram per pound. Uh, it will be enough in my opinion. However, just be mindful of the fact that when you're increasing carbohydrates through your off season, you will naturally get protein to increase through incomplete sources. But wh whilst it's incomplete, it's still adding you know, some protein in. Once you've got it at a desired level, later on in an off season, it's not needed. And you want to be increasing your calories from carbohydrates that will further your performance in the gym, as opposed to increasing a calorie that once you have at the desired amount, is only going to make your appetite worse. And it's going to make it very difficult to sustain your bulk. Whereas you could be having it from you know, carbohydrates, which are far more important in my opinion. So this is, I'd recommend this because there's so low calories, 100 milliliters is 13 calories. So I see a lot of people nowadays, including myself, have cereal with whey and not everyone likes that. Uh, so I understand if you don't want to put your whey in your cereal. So you could do this because it's so low calories and it would add like 100 mils is one gram of fat. So it would only add a small amount of fat to your post-workout meal. So it wouldn't be a diff uh, an issue at all. So yeah, almond unsweetened is the way forward. Obviously it's not as sweet, but it's so low calories that it's worth it in my opinion. And especially even if you're dieting, like you can, as long as you keep it consistent, you could even do this in, in a prep. Uh, it's a way to go, almond unsweetened. I never understood, Huel is like just not nice in the slightest. And then the whole bottle is like 40 grams of carbs for 20 grams of protein. I get it could be an actual meal, but why would you want to have this as a meal? Sorry if you have heel guys, but I've just never been one to agree with it. Tastes horrible as well. Also, you must be so hungry after. It's like, yeah, it's nothing. What's the point? Calories. Yeah, you're dieting and you're drinking a meal. That's stupid. Yeah. Will be Sunday square bars. I'm intrigued. Wow, let's get some. Oh, there's loads. Mint choc, chocolate orange. I haven't tried these. Squares bars are always a good move if you're in a rush and you want something post-workout in my opinion, but it's not like the most nutritionally healthy food, but you can do it if you want something post-workout. So, yeah, Coca Balls every day. This is basically my post-workout meal if you've been watching my YouTube. So you'll know this is my post-workout meal basically every single time. It's just, I love rice-based cereal because it digests so quickly. So when you trained, you want a carbohydrate source that it's just carbohydrates. You don't want really any fats there. This is the time to have a high carbohydrate meal to spike insulin, to get your uh, glycogen stores replenished as quick as possible to promote more recovery. So you want something that digests very easily. When you're in the off season, you also want something very high in carbohydrates, especially post-workout. So Cocoa Pops is a great move. People always worry about the sugar. I'll tell you right now, the sugar content isn't the thing that's going to affect fasted blood glucose. It's the volume of carbohydrates, body fat. Um, it's the amount, sorry, it's the amount of carbohydrates, body fat, and you know whether you move enough through the day. It's not to do with sugar. So don't worry about sugar, especially post-workout. This is a time when you want to almost have a little bit of sugar and spike your insulin. Uh, that's the time when you need that to happen. So yeah, don't think that you can't have Coca Pops. You can. I'm sorry, but like, that looks like the blandest cereal ever. <laughs> it's almost green. Yeah, it is green. <laughs> it does not look good. This is the game changer when you're in the off season. I can promise you now, you don't want to do loads of it because it will bump your fiber up like crazy. However, if appetite is down, this will be so much easier to get your calories in. It's a little bit higher in fat than oats, but only a touch. So if you're stressing over it, all I would do, honestly, is just match the calories. It's actually pretty similar in terms of macronutrients, to be fair. And yet again, a little bit more sugar. But like I said, it's not too much of a problem. And it, it, in desperate times, you know, last meal of the day, you're not hungry at all. And you've got to have a massive bowl of oats and you're heaving on your oats. You can swap this in and it goes down so much easier. So I would recommend. I did have a question actually asking about how I track my fiber and how to avoid having too much fiber. So all I would suggest is when you have this, I wouldn't go over hundred grams in my opinion and just see, use trial and error. So see how, you know, hundred grams of granola feels. If your digestion isn't the best, you know that fiber is a little bit too high, bring it down a touch and then you could add in 
other carbohydrate sources with it, maybe a bagel on the side. That's what I do. So I have this with a bagel just to prevent fiber going too high. Uh, but honestly, yeah, this is this makes my life so much easier. I haven't blended any meals in, in the off season and I don't think I'll need to because I'm just doing some granola and bagels instead. Bagels. So obviously I just said, you know, you can do granola and then a bagel to prevent your fiber going too high. So cinnamon bagels are so nice. I have it post-workout and then in meal five, you can add some jam with it post-workout just to bring the carbs up a little bit easier. My post-workout meal goes down so easily because it's cereal, bagels, bananas, jam. Very easy to digest, very easy to eat, not too high in volume, especially, you know, bagels are very low in volume for the amount of carbohydrates. You know, one, one of these is 230 calories, so very easy to get down. And yeah, you could add peanut butter, jam and stuff like that. That's what I tend to do. Uh, so yeah, bagels are, you know, a very trusted carbohydrate source in the off season. Oh, lint isn't the best. Oh, yeah. Green and black, that's all right. So yeah, this is hands down my favorite food, dark chocolate. I definitely probably eat a little bit too much of this in my diet, but it is so healthy for you. It's a monounsaturated fat. It's known to, it contains oleic acid, which is in other things like olive oil, olive oil I believe. So what it does is it increases your HDL, so your healthy lipoproteins. This is so beneficial in terms of preventing you from cardiovascular disease because low density lipoproteins can lead to blood clotting. So they're, they're bigger, so they can cause blood clots in, in, your, in your arteries. So having some dark chocolate brings up HDL, which reduces LDL, and that will make your lipids a lot better. So if you ever do your bloods, and you, your, lipid, your lipids are out of range, I would really recommend dark chocolate. So olive oil spray, game changer. I don't like using olive oil too often. I think it's, I don't know, it's just something that I don't really do. If you use an air fryer, this is very useful because you can just spray it on top and it makes it really crispy. Obviously there's like no calories in it. I, don't, I wouldn't say it's probably the healthiest thing, but it's very easy to use and on prep, you're really hungry. I'm not on prep, so, but if you are on prep, <laughs> well, you can tell I'm not on prep. <laughs> if I was, that would be worrying. Um, yeah, if you are dieting, you don't really want to be using calories from things that you don't even feel. You know, olive oil, there's nothing like, it doesn't satiate you whatsoever. So using this is a lot better and that gives you more room for fats elsewhere from dark chocolate, peanut butter, things like that. Um, that reminds me, I need peanut butter. So peanut butter, something that really pisses me off is that some people think that having peanut butter on toast is enough protein. They're like, oh, peanut butter is really high in protein. 20 grams of this, so like a tablespoon, is five grams of protein. So if you think that this is adequate to get a protein spike, unless you're 40 kilos, it's not gonna work. Um, but it is a good fat source, and it can bump up your protein a little bit, so that is a good thing about it. And yeah, it tastes really nice, so, and you can have it in Greek yogurt, stuff like that, so yeah, I would recommend that. Jam. Not much to say to that, but <laughs> although someone asked a question, they literally said, how do I eat more? Which I found quite funny. So I don't know if I kind of get what they're trying to ask is how do I get calories in easily? But if you want to eat more, eat more. <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, stuff like this, and obviously the granola is really easy to get in calories. So jam is 100 grams. It's 239 calories. So obviously that's a really easy way to get calories in. So if you have that on top of a bagel, that bumps the calories up. So if I was here on prep, I'd be buying all of this. Because the off season, that stuff is a bad idea. <laughs> it ruins your appetite. Now this is an important one for the off season. Sauces. You need to use sauces when you make your food. I'm gonna say like, unless you've got an amazing appetite, Sometimes people think bodybuilders have to eat bland foods. And I think some people almost think that they're hardcore for eating really bland foods. And that's not the case. Like, you should it's make opposite, your... Isn't it? Literally. Huh? Like, what is wrong with people? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, you eat salads and, like, fresh food and, yeah, oh, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. <laughs> she agrees. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, you... you like you can use seasoning, you can use sauces. I always prefer to use sriracha. This is always 
my favourite sauce. I have a lot of sriracha. It's really low in calories, this, so it doesn't even matter. But if you wanted to, say, use barbecue sauce or something, which is high in calories, that's not a problem. Just be consistent with it in the off season. You don't need to worry about sauces too much. Just be consistent. So don't even look at the calories. You don't need to start tracking your sauces. You just have to have like, a similar amount in your meals. So say you've picked your meals, you have chicken and rice or I don't know, beef and rice or whatever it is, and you have 20 grams of barbecue sauce. And just make sure that's consistent from day one. And then once you pull food away, you're taking the same amount of calories away because you're keeping it in. So just keep it consistent. And if you are going to eventually stop being consistent, that's when you need to track it so you know what you're putting away from that. Uh, but in the off season, you probably don't even need to weigh it. You can just have your sauce, put it on, on your food and not really stress. You can even eyeball it. I honestly don't think you need to worry too much about it. When you ha you've got to look at it like this. When you're in the off season, when you're having 4,000 plus calories, the calories from sources are like a drop in the ocean. It's not going to make a difference. When you're dieting, that's when it matters more. It makes more significant difference in terms of percentages, in terms of your calories. So just be smart, uh, but don't make your food bland. Don't be that person that thinks that they're some sort of crazy bodybuilder because they have tuna out of a, like a can, a tin with dry rice. Like you're just a psychopath, really. <laughs> Look at this. Natural Olympia getting sweet chili jam. You can do it, guys. Like, they sold stuff like this. Jesus Christ. You should do bicycle. Next lockdown, I'm getting some of these. <laughs> That's actually... Next lockdown? <laughs> uh, yeah, hopefully not. Hope not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully there isn't one, but if there is. I'm not really sure how I, this is the last thing. I forgot it. How do I forget like, my main carbohydrate source? But rice, white rice, pretty simple. Um, it's kind of the same point about post-workout having cereal it's a faster acting carb it will digest quicker but it's not as quick as cereal so you could do it pre-workout with some fats and it'll digest really nicely into your session and it is ultimately just a really easy carbohydrate source to eat so even in my rest days i have a lot of rice um yeah i probably have 300 grams of rice on my training day and almost 400 on my non-training day so a lot of rice but it goes down easily it's very easy to cook yeah not much to be said other than you know, you can't be a bodybuilder if you're not having rice. I'm just kidding, you can, but, you know, it's a stereotype. <laughs> Something I've been using a lot, wraps. Literally, in a wrap, there's 33 carb per one wrap. Wrap, I can't even say it properly. But 33 carbs, very easy in terms of getting calories in. So if you do like chicken, you can put some salad in it. Yeah, something I recommend in the off season because it's pretty high in calories. In my opinion, you know, one of them is 181 calories, and it's just like a really thin wrap. So, so there we have it. A full weekly shop for a natural bodybuilder. I don't know why I'm saying natural. It's not like it would make a difference. Uh, but yeah, that's all my food. And now I'm basically doing shrugs. <laughs> it actually hurts. So much in it. Fuck me. I tell you what, being a bodybuilder does not make you functional. You have all this strength and then you complain when you carry shopping bags. Fucking hell. Because <laughs> always you're sore. So right now my traps are fucked from deadlifts. And I'm just like, geez. Well, we'll just finish with some questions. Someone asked any specific like timings in terms of pre and post like routine with, with nutrition. So yeah, I always try and have my pre-workout meal about an hour before. I think it depends on the size of the meal. I could have that meal two hours before, to be honest, but it's just because of my routine, that's kind of how I do it. Have it at least an hour before. If it's white rice, that's fine. If you're having oats, try and have it about two hours before, in my opinion, because it's a slower processing carbohydrate. And then post-workout, I always go with the same food. You know, I've talked about it in the video, cereal, bagels, jam, and that doesn't have to be at a specific time. It, you don't need to stress about the whole anabolic window. It's a bit of a myth. As long as you're getting a good amount of carbohydrates in, eventually post-workout and getting like your glycogen stores replenished, that's the job done. So you don't need to rush it. You don't need to think, oh, I need to have a protein shake like 20 minutes after I've trained, stuff like that. As long as you have it within an hour and a half, you're good. So yeah, that's what I do, you know, pretty simple. And I don't overthink it. The biggest advice I could give you guys is to not overthink things. Like don't think, oh, I need to have this at certain times all the time. People can get so fixated on like the intricate details that they just can't do it and they get too distracted and they're like, oh, I can't I give up. 
Don't make it complicated. Just eat your meals, divide them up by two to three hours. If something goes wrong, have it within you know, an hour and a half. Uh, you, know, you don't have to stress about that, honestly. It's not worth it. And overstressing about things like, things like that hold people back so much in this sport. Something I've really learned through working with people is to just relax. Um, so yeah, that's this video done. Bit of a different video. I'm glad we didn't get kicked out. Uh, we were kind of trying to be as discreet as we could. But yeah, I don't think they cared as much this time, which was nice. Um, but yeah, it's a bit awkward. Took a thumbnail in a supermarket. It's a bit weird. <laughs> I just stood outside with shopping bags, trying to get a thumbnail. This is what YouTube's done to me, guys. Uh, but yeah, uh, like and subscribe, all that stuff. And we'll see you in the next video. Weekly uploads continue. We're gonna keep them rolling. YouTube's blowing up right now. Gotta keep the videos coming. Just gotta keep it going throughout the whole season. And then prep will be not that long away. And then it'll be an exciting prep series again in 2025. So yeah, I'll see you in the next video.